right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from Blue Sky, San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Michael O'Brien, who's in an equally blue sky, New Jersey. Right, Michael? Absolutely, John. Good to be with you. Two Irish guys talking about sales. Yeah, pretty cool. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, Michael is an international speaker and he's on a quest to help one million people have their last bad day. And uh, I'd say there's probably more than one million people who'd line up for that for sure. Uh, and so, Michael, this is the whole genesis of this um, was you had a you got struck head on by a speeding SUV back in 2001 when you're out training on your bike. And then that helped you sort of reorient your thinking going forward. Absolutely. It really helped reorientate my way of living, but also my career. So my career has been in sales and marketing. So yeah, right. on July 11th, 2001. So as we speak here, we're coming up to the 19 year mark. I was at a company meeting, an offsite, sales offsite, and I rode, I was riding my bike and around a bend I went and that SUV was fully in my lane, John, going about 40 miles an hour, hit me head on, broke a whole bunch of everything to make a long story short. Doctors really have no idea how I survived, let alone got back on the bike. But that was the start of, you know, writing a new chapter, a new way of like showing up professionally and personally. I call it my last bad day because we have choice in how we look at our days. And I decided I was gonna label that one the last bad one and build off of that. You know, each day getting a little bit better, a little bit stronger. And that's how I've been living my life and running my sales career and my business ever since. Wow, and, and what we're gonna talk about is this concept of preventing bad moments from turning into bad days. And let's face it, I mean, particularly if you're in sales, but in, in, any, in any role, but particularly in sales, it's very, very easy to get just knocked off track. Maybe your first phone call of the day, your first email is not the answer you're looking for, or, or suddenly they say, yeah, I know I said I was gonna sign that deal, but uh, something changed. And, and then your whole day just spirals downhill. Absolutely. I think we all have had many, many bad moments. And in mm -hmm. fact, what we're going through right now is one heck of a bad moment yeah. or a whole bunch of bad moments layered on top of one mm -hmm. another. And so when I talk about having your last bad day, what I'm not talking about is unicorns and rainbows. It's sure. really that moment in time where you're like, okay, I want to write a new script. But certainly I've had some bad moments since that last bad day. And for me, what what I see happening in professional life and personal life is that when that bad moment happens, it hijacks someone. And so that say bad meeting at 3 PM on a Friday can ruin the whole weekend or yeah. that bad sales, sales call on Tuesday morning ruins the whole day. So what I'm trying to do is help folks realize, Hey, those moments are going to happen. Mm -hmm. Let's recognize it. Let's not just pack it away and try to grit through it, but recognize it, try to shift our perspective so we can move on to behaviors or actions that can bring out the best in us. So what is it about the human psyche or the human uh, condition that we could have 20 good moments today, but the bad moment is the one that will dominate everything? Well, because we're really hardwired for survival. You know, when you get mm -hmm. down to that real primitive part of our brain, we just want to stay alive. So we right. pay a disproportional amount of attention or we over index on the threats and then we blow past the good things. Like if it's something good happens to us, John, we're like, Oh yeah, yeah. I totally <laughs> expected that. But since we're hardwired for survival and, you know, I, I know a lot of people use the saber tooth tiger roaming around as an example, mm -hmm. but when we have a bad moment, there is some type of threat to our well being, to our, status if you will those things can be triggers so we tend to remember those much more vividly than our good moments and it really just goes back to how we were um you know thousands of years ago so how do we how do we overcome that how do we stop a a, a an isolated incident and maybe one isolated incident in the midst of a lot of good stuff like we we're saying at the beginning maybe you get, a, you get a negative email from a prospect or something, but there's other good stuff happening. How do you prevent that one thing you're just dominating? Well, one thing I developed coming out of my recovery, actually developed it when I was in the hospital because 
I was still having some moments. Like I was going sure. through a lot. My recovery was not fast and it wasn't linear. Mm-hmm. It was all choppy all over the place, much like life. So I have something that I think folks will appreciate called grabbing a PBR, which does not stand for Paps Blue Ribbon because as two Irishmen, we will drink <laughs> maybe a, a, a different type of beer or two. Yeah. So, but PBR stands for pause, breathe and reflect. So when we get triggered, when we have a bad moment, it's so important to reconnect with our breath. Just hit the pause button, take a minute or two to deep breathe and then reflect about, okay, how do I want to look at this? What do I want to say and do next? And then that reframing part of the reflection is, what's the benefit benefit of this situation for me? How is this happening for me, not to me? One of the biggest things I had to learn coming out of my recovery, because at first I thought, like, well, I was playing the victim, John. I thought this happened sure. to me a lot mm-hmm. with COVID. This is happening to us. I believe my accident in this moment in time is happening for us. So when we have a bad moment, so how do we reframe it to say, okay, how is this a possible opportunity? How is this happening for me instead of to me? And it, sh- it shifts the, the frame, it shifts the perspective. And now we can get on to some action that can lead us forward, uh, allow us to go down the road a little bit faster. Yeah, there's a couple of things there that I just want to do, um, focus in on. I mean, this idea of, you know, pause, breathe and reflect, right? That is so counter to the pervasive culture we unfortunately exist in today where everything is reacted. The whole thing is react immediately, like and react emotionally and, and whatever, you know, just instant reaction. Um, so that's going to be something that people are going to have to relearn this idea or learn, maybe learn for the first time, this idea of pausing because we live in a culture that doesn't celebrate pausing. Well, yeah, because we, I think we've, you know, part of the vernacular out there, the dialogue is that maybe you're lazy or you're going to be left behind, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. if you pause, if you slow down, you will lose status. And I was a lot like that before my accident. And I got hit, my accident happened before we had social media. It's worse mm-hmm. now in 2020 nice. than 20, yeah. 2001. So, but this is critical you know, to slow down so we can be more thoughtful, some would say mindful of what we're going to do. I'd rather have someone slow down to go faster or slow down to go better than just react. I think what we're experiencing in 2020 is that adrenaline rush of reaction. Mm -hmm. And we're starting to feel the exhaustion of that adrenaline. Like when the adrenaline Mm -hmm. rush is over, we crash. So the power in it for sales professionals, really any professional, is the ability to slow down, just catch our breath for a bit and be more thoughtful about what we're gonna say and do next. We can be proactive, as cliche as it sounds, instead of reactive. Yeah, and it is, and it, and it is very tempting, especially now, um, you know, just even focusing on sales, because you've got all these tools in front of you that you can react really fast. I mean, now you can, you can text message somebody, you know, a prospect immediately, something happens. Um, so I do think that whole idea of taking a moment to reflect rather than just react is something that I think will stand to people because it's been lost. It's a lost art in some ways. And we all have instances that we can point of, of when we got messages that we were just like, what? <laughs> yeah. That isn't even what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah, because well, the, also the receiver of your message yeah. is also probably in the need for a PBR or two. Yeah. So now we have this reactive cortisol adrenaline conversation and we totally miss the point of the conversation. We miss the mark. And that's what's happening. When we're not thoughtful, our conversations don't go as well as we'd like. And hey, sales is a conversation. Yeah. The better we get a conversational intelligence, the more sales we're going to be able to produce. Yeah, and getting into the and and that age old thing about actually the conversation is actually listening to the other person as opposed to, as opposed to preempting or thinking about what you're going to say next. And I think that's the other thing is I mean maybe you're maybe you're doing a lot more virtually like this on Zoom or or you know you're doing a lot more phone calls or whatever because you're not doing face to face anymore. Um, I think you have to learn how to take pauses there and be okay with a little bit of silence while you reflect or saying just. Do you mind if I have a second just to think about what you just said? I love that, John, because, you know, we know, like, you know, sort of enjoy the silence in sales that mm-hmm. t- it creates some tension. 
And so sometimes as sales professionals, we do it by design, right? To create mm -hmm. the tension, to lead to the sale. But now that we're in this Zoom world, this virtual world, any degree, any moment of silence, I think is making a lot of people uncomfortable. And yeah. I think we just should, you know, we use this time again, how this is happening for us is to learn how to deal with some silence. It's going to make us better when we go out, out into the field again, face to face with our customers. I, I know, I know I felt it and I teach this stuff. Um, I know a whole bunch of my clients too. It's like, it's a little awkward when it gets quiet on Zoom. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I just let it, you know, just let it breathe. Let's sit with it. Cause we have some of our best ideas when we get quiet. We don't necessarily have some of our most brilliant ideas when we're all rushing around and reacting <laughs> to things. We're just in survival mode when, when we, when we get to that state of being. Yeah, no, it is. It, it just getting used to silence again, and it's funny. It's like we've we've done so much to try and eliminate silence um, from from our lives that I think getting used to it again. The other thing that I, I love what you brought up is this idea of things happening to me, like you know, this pandemic's happening to me. This uh, you know, my bad year or whatever's happening is happening to me. I mean, we're let's face it, we're fantastic at wallowing in our own self pity, and we're also phenom I mean, you know, we're phenomenal at appropriating things that have got nothing to do with us, but we'll appropriate it and think it's all happening happening to us. How do you how do you get yourself out of that that mindset? Because I mean, obviously, say the experience that you went through. Let's face it nobody would have blamed you if you'd have just like said, this is a terrible thing that happened to me and you were, you know, full of like self pity. Well, in the beginning I was, they're like, sure. and Hey, and, and they were like, we don't blame you. Like you are yeah. the victim. Like the driver mm -hmm. had a revoked license. You shouldn't have been driving. Mm -hmm. So I also talk about something called your Peloton. So for those mm -hmm. that know a little bit about cycling, you'll know a mm -hmm. Peloton is a group of cyclists in a bike race, like the tour de France, they need yeah. each other. I use yeah. it as a metaphor for your personal board of directors. So for me, when I was in the hospital during a very low moment where I was playing the victim, a mentor said to me, hey, Michael, you know what? All the events in your life are neutral until you label them. And I was like, what? Wow. And he went on, he said, nothing has meaning until you give it meaning. So you are now thinking of this as happening to you, but you can have a different meaning. This could be happening for you to demonstrate to yourself, to your family, to the world perhaps, that you are resilient, that you can get through these really difficult moments in life and be a role model. And that was a beginning of my shift in my thinking to say, wow, like every event has some neutrality to it. I get to put the label on it, hence the last bad day. I can give things meaning. And so that moment in time allowed me, okay, now I can see things a little bit differently. When we slow down, because I still get hijacked and think, oh, this sure. is happening you know, to me. That's when I grab like, a little bit of that breath, that PBR, and say, okay, well, where is there an opportunity in all of this for me? As difficult it is as it is, and I try to like then make my decisions as I go forward using that lens as opposed to I'm the victim, what was me, life is so unfair. Yeah, I mean, that's fascinating. I love that concept about events are neutral till you give them a label, uh, because that, give, that puts the power back in your hands, as opposed to outsourcing it to whatever the event is and, uh, and always giving a negative label. But that's, that's fantastic. Therefore, um, you know, for people listening now during this pandemic, uh, maybe your business, maybe your sales are down, maybe your business is down, maybe whatever. But you can say, okay, well, this is a great chance for me to work on my skill set, to reconfigure my business, to envision the future, whatever it is. We can look at this as as opportunity, as difficult as it may be at times. Yeah, I know. I know not everyone's there. There's a bunch yeah. of polling I've done, and they're like, yeah, I get about 50-50. Like, Michael, we're with you. This is happening for us. The balance is like, this is happening to us. But I know this sitting in a place of victimhood you can never produce the things you want to produce to get out of it right so you you need to have one one of the biggest lessons i learned through my recovery is that have the right people in your camp riding by your side so use this moment this can be one of these moments where it's a little bit of a pause to say who's in my camp who's in my corner in the trenches riding beside me however you want to look at it and get really smart about those people because those people are going to help you get out of this moment when things go back to whatever the new normal is. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I love that idea too about the, the Peloton, because if anybody's ever watched, uh, you know, professional cycling like the Tour de France and they, you know, they recognize, you know, the, maybe the big star name in the team, but maybe they don't recognize the fact is that the, that it's the team helping that person uh, stay in the race, you know, and, and the way they maneuver and support and your idea of this personal board of directors. Just elaborate a little more on that, because I think that's a very powerful concept to people and maybe one that they overlook. Yeah. And again, I think this is a moment to take stock in like, who is that? And a lot of people yeah. don't. So I look at it as almost two columns, personal and professional mm -hmm. and five distinct roles. So the roles are who who in my life can help me gain some clarity when I'm stuck? They'll ask that really provocative question. Who's in there uh, in my camp during a crisis or crises like this moment in time? Who can challenge me and confront me to think a little bit mm -hmm. different, put me out, uh, push me outside my comfort zone? Who can comfort me when I need some soothing and some sympathy? And then who's with me in times of celebration? Now you can have like the same person play multiple roles. You know, my wife plays a couple different roles personally. She plays none of those roles professionally. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wanna make sure that my Peloton is as diverse as possible because, hey, I'm gonna go to those folks and I'm on other people, I'm in other people's Pelotons too. It's a two way mm -hmm. street. So how do they help me out? How do I support them in return? And knowing that we all play different roles, uh, all valuable, not necessarily all being used at the same time, but we are part of this larger community, uh, which allows us, you know, to play off the cycling metaphor a little bit further, to go down the road as, as fast as possible and also as, as safely as possible. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's such a it's such a powerful concept. And also because what we were just talking about is you can look at this as a great opportunity right now. Maybe this is a perfect time to take stock of who those people are, both personally and professionally, and maybe to identify them and figure out what role they can play. And maybe you'll discover that there are people on on your team right now who are actually not helping you go as fast as you can. Yeah, and I've had to do that through this, you know, this period of mm -hmm. COVID. You know, there's some people that I decided to drop from my Peloton, to be honest. Mm -hmm. It just, mm -hmm. I didn't think they were bringing out the best in me. I didn't see them as part of my future because I also took stock yeah. in, hey, okay, this is a moment in time. This is a game changer. What do I want my world to look like a year from now? Who's mm -hmm. around me? Um, who do I need to add to my Peloton? And who do I need to subtract from it? You know, sort of, you know, addition through subtraction. And I've been working on that. And I think it's a good, it's a good thing to do for everyone because this moment has given us a chance to pause in the most unusual of ways, but nevertheless, yeah. it's still an opportunity to do some reflection. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think if you don't take this opportunity and you just kind of wait it out and hope everything goes back to normal and you just restart your life as best you can where you left it off, I think you're missing missing a great opportunity, as you say, for for some reflection and maybe for some reconfiguration, which is something that we all need to do every so often anyway. I agree. And because this this moment is going to change multiple industries, if not, mm -hmm. if not yeah. all industries. So if you are hanging on to what was and you're not willing to embrace even though there is a lot of uncertainty and mm -hmm. I had to deal with this too coming out of my recovery sure. there was some uncertainty about my future you have to sit in that uncomfortable or that discomfort for a bit longer lead with your heart first find what your purpose and your vision is because we all need to change in order to be remarkable and memorable as we go forward those that don't I I'm, I'm sad to say, I think we'll be left behind as the economy shifts once again. Yeah, no, I, I, I couldn't agree more because I think business is going to reconfigure this. Different businesses are going to crop up, different opportunities. Some traditional ones are going to obviously struggle and may not come back uh, anytime soon or may or any or in the same guise as before. So I think if you're in sales, particularly, you've got to get creative now and look at look at your traditional market and say, OK, what does it look like now? Are there adjacent markets? Is it going to be different? Should I be selling differently? I mean, there's lots of things that you can reflect on. But I think if you don't take this opportunity now to do that reflection, you are going to get stuck and kind of left behind. Yeah, absolutely. And so this is a chance to, you know, grab a PBR, you know, yeah. reframe it, understand who, 
who is in your peloton and then take small steps towards that new identity or that new vision you have. I think those are beautiful ways to prevent these bad moments from gaining any more fuel than they really deserve and not turning into a bad day because we don't we don't need any more of those. So yeah, the, we don't need any more of those. Sales is tough enough. It, we don't need to have self-inflicted wounds, right? So yeah. it's already <laughs> it's already difficult. So those are ways that I use with my team when I was the VP of sales and now I use it as I coach my sales leaders on how to do it with their teams. Yeah, listen, that's fantastic, Michael. Great way to end. So great takeaways here for people. And all of Michael's information is going to be in his contributor bio. But before we go, Michael, do please tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Well, so I'm an executive coach. I'm also a speaker. I go out and talk about the power of mindset, the importance of your Peloton and resilience. But I also work with high level sales executives, marketing executives. That's the world I came from. I spent 22 years in healthcare and on the commercial side. And now I run Peloton Executive Coaching. So uh, and really to sort of live my purpose. I think I lived or survived my accident for multiple reasons. One of them is to help sales and marketing leaders lead better so they can have more of an impact, more of an influence, and hopefully help them prevent a version of their SUV from coming even close to them. I've gone through enough pain and suffering for them. So I help my clients make a shift to avoid that to begin with. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And as I always say to people is, uh, you know, don't wait around for people. Don't wait around for your company to invest in you. Don't wait around for other people to invest in you. Invest in yourself. And one of the best ways you can do that is through coaching. Is through go find a, find a coach and a mentor. Um, I think it's the, one of the best investments you'll ever make. And I often say to people, you probably invest lots of money in your hobbies. We'll invest a little money in what puts bread on the table. Absolutely. That, I'm, I'm biased with that, but I completely sure. agree. We spend a lot. We probably spend a lot more buying our coffee each year than our own development. We expect our company to do it, but mm. find the right person for you. Sure. Yeah. They're also a, a very important essential member of your Peloton to bring out, to help you see sometimes what you can't see for yourself and help you grow in some really magical ways. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, Michael O'Brien, thank you very much. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.